In our mathematics class today, we shall be looking at the topic locus. The plural of locus is loci. Locus is defined as the path traced by an object. We have some basic loci, and then we are also going to look at the general loci. Locus, basic loci. Locus, the plural loci, is a path or a set of points traced by an object in a plane obeying certain rules or principles, algebraic rules. Basic loci. Number one, locus of a point which is equidistant from a given point. I repeat, locus of a point which is equidistant from a given point. Here is the face point and here is the distance and then this point is moving around. It will trace a path which eventually forms a circle with a face point. So this is the path traced or set of points that were made that eventually form this object, this shape. This is a circle center the fixed point with radius equal to the fixed distance. Now, from here to here is the distance, it is fixed. For any part that you trace it to, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, whatever part you draw it, the distance is fixed. While the point is also fixed, it is only the end point here that is moving why this one is fixed so you are tracing a path you are tracing a path and the path you finally trace is a circle is a circle giving you the center as the fixed point and the radius as the fixed distance but in three dimensional surface this same definition or description is representing a spherical shape like the earth surface or a football. Here is the spherical surface. The center is there and then you have the radius as indicated in this diagram. But in this form, in a three-dimensional surface, it is called a sphere. So that description, locus of a point which is equivalent from the given point, is a circle in a two-dimensional surface but a sphere in a three-dimensional surface. The second basic loci is this. Locus of a point which is equidistant from two given points. Here is a point A and here is a point B. And the locus of a point equidistant from these two given points is the perpendicular back setter of the straight line joining the two points as described by this diagram here, this construction here. Now, in this sketch, you see now that at this point, this line, which I call the locus L, is perpendicular to the line AB and is meeting the line AB at the point M, which means that the distance from A to M are from M to B, they are equal. Choosing any point on the line, call it P, the distance from this point P from A to P and then from A and from P to B will also be equal. Even if you choose a point here, the distance from this point, let's call it Q, from Q to B and from Q to A will also be equal. That is the definition or the explanation of the locus of point which is equidistant from two given points. So, in summary, this is the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector, take note of that word, of the straight line joining the two points A and B. The two points A and B. The perpendicular bisector of the straight line joining the two points A and B. Number three, 
locus of points equidistant from a given straight line. Here is a given straight line A, B. And then we are looking for the locus of points equidistant from this given straight line. A line that is S unit from the line AB up, that is PQ of S unit from that from this line, and another line of the same S unit from the same line AB, and that is CD, and these lines are all parallel, is the locus of points equidistant from the line AB. So this AB is the given straight line. Why this line PQ and CD are the two other lines that are parallel to AB and of equal distance from the line AB. This is two parallel lines of equal distance from the given straight line AB. So the locus of points equidistant from a given straight line is two parallel lines of equal distance from the given straight line. Take note of that. Number four, locus of points which is equidistant from two intersecting straight lines. This time around, these two straight lines are intersecting. Take a look at it. This is the line AB, and then this is the line CD. They are meeting at this point. They are crossing each other at this point, intersecting at this point. Now that you know this, we are looking for the locus of points that is equidistant from these two intersecting straight lines. Of course, you see the broken lines that I've written here, I've, I've drawn here, this broken line. You see now that this line is bisecting the angle that is formed by A, B, and C, D. And of course, on the acute level of this, and this one is also another line bisecting the angle between uh, A, and this point here, let's call this point, point O. So, by setting the angle AOD and also the angle COB. This line is by setting, this line is also by setting, and of course, this is a bisector of the angles formed by the lines. How many angles are here? Four angles. One, two, three, four. The angles are bisected by this line, and this one is also bisected by this line. So, take note. The locus of points which is equidistant from two intersecting straight lines is the bisector of the angles formed by the lines. The bisector of the angles formed by the lines. Examples. Number one. The locus of a point which moves so that it is equidistant from two intersecting straight lines is the dash. A. Perpendicular bisector of the two lines. B. Angle bisector of the two lines. C. Bisector of the two lines. D. Line parallel to the two lines. The correct option here is B. Angle bisector of the two lines. A, C, and D are not appropriate for these locus. Example number two. The locus of a point equidistant from the intersection of lines 3S minus 7Y plus 7 equal to 0 and 4S minus 6Y plus 1 equal to 0 is a, a line parallel to 7S plus 13Y plus 8 equal to 0. B a circle, C a semicircle, D a bisector of the line 7s plus 13y plus 8 equal to 0. Now the correct option is B. Reason for that, we are talking about two intersecting straight lines and they are intersecting at this point. Assuming this is your 3s minus 7y plus 7 equal to 0 and this line is your 4s minus 6y plus 1 equal to 0 the point where they are intersecting say the locus of a point equidistant from the intersection 
maybe this is the you could decide from the intersection and this line is moving 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 eventually it will form what a circle so this is a circle the center is the point of intersection and the distance is the radius so this is a circle example number three the locus of a point which is equidistant from two given fixed points is the dash option a perpendicular bisector of the straight line joining them option b parallel line to the straight line joining them c transverse to the straight line joining them d angle bisector of 90 degrees which the straight line joining them makes with the horizontal the correct option is option A, perpendicular bisector of the straight line, journey them. There are two fixed points. Here is a point and here is another point. They are fixed, point A and point B. Okay, let's use something different from A and B because I have used A and B as options. Let's say S and Y. So, if you are looking for the locus of point which is equidistant from these two given fixed points, then it is going to be the perpendicular bisector of the straight line journey there and this is the perpendicular bisector so this is the locus of that point example number four what is the locus of a point p which moves on one side of a straight line sy so that the angle spy is always equal to 90 degrees a the perpendicular bisector of sy b a right angled triangle c a circle d a semicircle the correct option here is d a semicircle how we are told that the locus of a point P which moves on one side of a straight line. Here is our straight line. Let's have a straight line here. Watch this. Here is my straight line. And then the point here is your S and the point here is your Y. And on one side of it, let's take the upper side of it. There is a point P. It can be there. It can be there, it can be there, it can be there, it can be there, it can be there like that. There's a point that is moving. It's moving. It's moving. By the time you put infinite number of points, they will all join together to form a semicircle. To form a semicircle. So the point P, as it is here, from here, and then down to this point, this angle is 90 degrees if your p is here let's say this is p1 this is p2 from here and then to this point this angle is again 90 degrees if you choose it from here maybe this is point 3 from this point to s and from s to y again this is 90 degrees so at the end of the day you have a semi-circle, a semi-circle as the locus of point.